Now, we have another strong influence on film noir, the gangster picture. These films, set during the Prohibition era, imprinted the look and style of the American criminal on our subconscious minds forever. They were big, they were bad, and they were badass, but they were flawed. Their impact helped us relate to the characters in film noir better when they became more real and less one-dimensional. There are many great gangster movies like Little Caesar and Howard Hawks' Scarface, but today we will be discussing The Public Enemy. To all you out of work soda jerks without a penny to pinch, to the detectives with all the answers, to the dastardly dames who play men like baby dolls, and the trusted ones too pure for this world. And all you double-crossing, backstabbing, ruthless, baby-faced amateurs, this one's for you. So suit up, turn out the lights, put the match to your smokes, and sit back for the darker side of things. Cine Shadow Moonlights, Noir Vimper. The story of The Public Enemy surrounds Tom Powers and his buddy Matt as they grow up in the inner city of Chicago. Things seem to be doing pretty well. We see large carriages holding big barrels of beer. We see large cases of liquor. We see bars. The Salvation Army is there. But then we get a shot of Tom Powers and his buddy Matt drinking beer, being mean to little girls and not trying too hard to stay out of trouble. Tom and Matt grow up a little bit and approach Putty Nose about getting into the criminal industry. Putty Nose does have a job for them, stealing furs. But something goes wrong when they do the deed. Tom gets scared by a large stuffed bear and lets off a few gunshots. This alerts the police to their location and they are chased by one. They hide behind an alley, and you hear a couple gunshots, and they run from it. They have killed a police officer, and now they're looking for more guidance. But Putty Nose has left the building. The two chill out for a while and get jobs as delivery truck drivers. In the bar one night, they meet a man by the name of Patty Ryan. He says, There's two kinds of people. Right and wrong. Now I think you're right, and you'll find that I am unless you cross me. They hook up and become good friends. Patty Ryan is now their mentor. Then 1920 comes. The two, now under the leadership of Patty, get brought in on the racket. First, he has them go steal a giant tanker truck full of scotch. Then, once they do that properly, he trusts them a little bit more. Now it starts the general come up story. Getting more money, getting more trust, getting more clothes, getting more girls, getting more respect, getting more everything. They are now on the rise. Tom and Matt are now the muscle. They go around to all the different bars, forcing people to buy their liquor. And if they don't, they threaten to kick their teeth out. At one point, they go to a man's place and dump out all his old product and say, yep, now it looks like you are definitely need some of our stuff. But none of this really helps Tom grow or anything. He's still a child. There's one scene where he's shacked up with his lady, and he's just a total dickhead to her. She tries to act, tell him, you know, talk to him about morals and stuff like that. He just looks at her, smiles, and shoves a grapefruit into her face. This guy is a total dickhead. At this point, Tom just decides to go get himself a new chick. They're just materials to him, possessions. He doesn't care. He can always get more. One night, out with his new girl, he sees old Putty Nose. He devises a plan to go after him. A black cat crosses his path. In there are Tom and Matt waiting for him. He begs and pleads them, but they don't care. They're out for revenge. He goes and plays some piano for them, like the old days. And they just sit there and wait. The camera pans over to Matt as he looks on. Then you hear the gunshot and the dying moans of Putty Nose. Tom, 
Not phased at all. But Matt, you can tell that he's disturbed. Later in the film, Nails Nathan is killed by a horse. So now they're left without their leverage, without their power. There's one crazy funny scene where they go back to where the horse is stored at and they say, hey, where's the horse? And he says, oh, it's in there. And they kill the horse as revenge for Nails Nathan. This weakens their gang and the other gang starts seeing an opportunity to improve their business. They start blowing everything up. They blow up the brewery. They blow up their hideouts. They blow up everything they have. They almost have nothing left. So Paddy takes them to one of his secret places and tells them to stay put while he goes and tries to figure things out. After being seduced by Paddy's wife one night, Tom wakes up the next day and says, you know what? Hell with it. I'm out of here. He walks out of the place and Matt follows. What happens next is Matt is shot. This causes Tom to take action and avenge his buddy Matt's death. He finds out where the rival gang has been holding up at and he goes after them. There's an amazing tracking shot of Tom Powers walking towards the rival headquarters. It's dark out, it's raining, he's soaking wet, and he is pissed off. He goes in there, and without showing the deed, you hear the gunshots and know exactly what happens. Tom comes out of the place, and it clearly looks like he's been shot. He falls into the gutter, and crawls on his knees and lays there. The fatalism and desperation in this scene is exactly what we'll see in further noirs. There are some really great shots in this movie. Like the shot when the cop chases them down after they've been trying to steal the furs. They hide behind the alleyway and you don't see any of it, but you do see the aftermath. After they leave, there's a shot showing a man's hand lying on the ground and the smoking gun that he's holding. It's like a great flashback to what the silent age used to give us. There's also the shot when it hits 1920 and all the people are crazed and scrambling around trying to get all the booze they can before prohibition hits. I feel that that's what I'd be doing if the clock was ticking. I'd go down to the liquor store and I'd probably pick up some bourbon or whatever and all the toppling Goliath and Three Floyds beers I could, including Stouts to Age, baby. It's not like the noir films because the gangsters in these pictures are really one-dimensional and they're not really about anything except for the rise of the power and the money. But if you haven't seen it, or you haven't seen any of the other ones, definitely check it out. Also before going, I did want to mention that this is the movie that made James Cagney. You really believe that he is Tom Powers. Much to his chagrin though, he was typecast, but he did get some chances to show his acting range in such movies as Yankee Doodle Dandy and The Man of a Thousand Faces. It also propelled Warner Brothers as the premier gritty, hard-hitting studio. 